week a different guest where we talk about different topics related to wellness, healing, holistic practices. And today, with me here, I have the fabulous Professor Bob Zomer. <laughs> so Bob's been, I've been knowing Bob for, Bob, it's been 13 years now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 13 years, man. Yeah. And as any good host, of course, when you're a good host, you have to say, It's such an honor to have you here today as my guest. But for people watching us and for people to understand how much I mean when I say it's an honor, I often say that when I grow up, I want to be just like Bob. So just to give you guys a little reference. On yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, I usually reply, careful of what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Bob. So Bob is... a uh, professor of ecology and a scientific researcher. Is that correct? Yes. Most so of my career. That... Mostly I've been a research scientist most of my career and more recently visiting professor at the right. Kuming Institute of Botany in China. Hmm. So what, what does that mean, Bob? Can you break that down to us? Or can you explain that to me <laughs> very carefully, very slowly? What does that mean to be a professor of ecology and a, a, science, a research scientist? Well, ecology, of course, is the science of home. That's what that word translates to, ecology. So it's the science of home. And so ecology really is a scientific investigation of the world and the globe and the li living and life as it is on the planet. So there's a lot of research. My focus has been from the beginning on... Um, Uh, uh, sustainable systems, systems that provide uh, substance to the people of the world. And so I focus mostly on small farmers uh, in developing countries. So I've had a long career where I worked in Africa. I worked for the uh, International Center for Research in Agroforestry, mostly looking at trees and the role of trees uh, and the um, both in an environmental sense, but also in a socioeconomic and socioecological sense, how they contribute to people's livelihoods and welfare. Mm. So um, I originally studied international agricultural development with an emphasis in plant science. So I really like plants a lot. I worked with trees really a lot. Trees, I've had many relationships with trees. Functional fact, relationships, eh? Functional relationships, ones that, you know, as I told you many times, closure is, is really a good uh, emotion for that. But, um, and then uh, I worked on agroforestry, mostly international. I also looked at uh, the role of trees in farming systems in relation to water relations. Uh, I worked for five years in Sri Lanka at the International Water Management Institute. There I had a lot of projects in the Himalayas, South Asia, Pakistan even Afghanistan, mm. um, and projects in South America as well. And, uh, but mostly the focus, again, is on, uh, was on uh, development, sustainability, and, uh, and uh, small farmers, the role of small farmers all over the world uh, mm. in developing countries, you know, poor countries, places that are remote, don't have access to resources that... Uh, don't have the privilege of uh, adopting mechanized agriculture and all of the things that make the West work the way it works. And so um, um, that kind of led to, eventually I uh, worked in the, in the, at the uh, International Center for uh, Integrated Mountain Development based in Kathmandu. And there, uh, I had a bit of a broader, a broader um, mandate, and uh, I suppose one of the projects that I'm actually most most proud of was actually that I got to be part of the founding and establishment of Kailash Sacred Landscape. So Kailash also being important to the alternative community and you know six religions. We're all talking over about the, world. The, the mountain Kailash, right? Mount the mountain for people. Mount that might Kailash, know what that yeah. Is. So, Mount Kailash. Yeah, and so we actually had like, a, you know, I actually was sort of like, it was the uh, 
part of an international agreement between India, China, and Nepal for environmental cooperation. It was the, really the first instance of uh, India and China signing uh, any sort of cooperation on environmental uh, transboundary issues. So Amazing. there's a, uh, so it's, I had a, a really a lot of opportunity to do interesting things. A kid from LA, but but I traveled all over the world and uh, had an opportunity to uh, participate, but also really to, um, to, to, to empathize and be part of the bigger world that's out there. Keep in mind that it's such a big world. There's so many people out there and there's so much going on. So um, anyway, and then more recently, I was professor. I, I got a... Um, position as a visiting professor at the Kuming Institute of Botany at the Center for Mountain Ecosystem Studies. And that also was basically looking at the, uh, the role that small farmers can play. And there are lots of interesting projects there, cons conserving forests through mushroom cultivation, uh, mm. things like that, you know, that are basically community-based, small farmers, community-based projects that have an emphasis on not just sustainability of people, but socio-ecological ecological systems in general. Mm. That is to say, maintaining somehow maintaining environmental health while uh, supporting communities. So that's really an issue in the world uh, in general, I'd say. And so that's mm. pretty much uh, what I focused on mostly. So re the kind of research you do is you go out to the farm and you talk to farmers and you dig a hole and measure something, you know, it's uh... a <laughs> nice, one, nice. So you, you mentioned a few, a few things that are sort of buzzwords at the moment. Uh, health, obvi for obvious reasons, is a buzzword. Everybody's obviously focused about their health. Uh, sustainability is something that we have been forced to look at. Is the systems operating right now sustainable? Is our health practices sustainable? Is the, is the way that we're living our lives sustainable in any way, right? Uh, and words like wellness, holistic, healing, these are things that we hear on a daily basis. Uh, and there is an increasing interest from the global co uh, population on these matters. And yet, it seems that it's very individualized. People are very concerned about how can I improve this body, the health in this body? How can I make these organs function better? How can I increase my peak physical performance, my mental activity, productivity, so on and so forth? And it seems that we tend to forget that uh, if our environment, if our home yeah, is not a healthy space, then there's no way that our health can thrive. Yeah? And uh, for someone like you that travel all around the world, and as you said, the world is so big. And yet, this is the one thing that we all have in common, is that we do live in the same home to a certain extent, right? Well, that's absolutely true. The thing is, it's, it's of course, you know, multitasking. Everything is multi somehow. It's important, of course, to maintain one's personal health because if you can't, you know, if you don't have the energy, you can't contribute, you see. Mm -hmm. But you also have to, you know, we all depend and we're, we're, you know, this idea that we're independent is completely misguided. We are intricately involved with our ecosystem, with our planet, with, every, with our social cultural community, our community base. And so people are both, you know, biological animals and their community social animals as well. And so it's important that we have health at all those um, levels. For, mm. for, for, for sure, it's important that people take care of themselves and self-care so that you can be healthy so somebody else doesn't have to take care of you. But you don't stop and there. So, you know, all of that. Yeah. So yeah. all of that yeah. implies, you know, having a healthy diet, healthy, healthy, uh, you know, uh, habits, healthy ex exercise, and creating a healthy environment for you mm -hmm. and everybody else. But at the same time, to think that you can do that by yourself is a fallacy, because of course, you know, we all breathe the same air, we all drink the same water, we're all dependent upon the food systems that we create. So we all, the, and we all, we, and we all have an opportunity to make individual choices that, uh, that contribute to the direction or the, the general quality of what that might look like. So mm. that's all important. So individual action 
on the health level, but also on the sort of uh, social consciousness level is important is an important uh, level to be at but certainly also there's the community and so community is where we live like even if you think you live alone in the jungle like i do we still relate on our community to mm -hmm. to support and to be supported somehow because uh our food systems are are, are spread out all over the world and you know this is how you, you vote with your dollars. If you buy organic agriculture, you're saying your, your preference for the kind of world that you want. If you start buying, you know, like a lot of something, you know, I won't go into details, you're also making a, a statement about the kind of world that you want. So there are implications for that as well. And, and uh, at the higher level, at the collective health level, there it's important, I think, that people get involved so that their voice will be heard. The idea that you can create your own separate reality or that a separate salvation is available to you is optimistic. Mm -hmm. to say we the tried, least, we see. failed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we, we tried, we failed. But you know, these things are not new. They're not mm. new. For example, uh, Francis Moore LaPay wrote the, um, the, the book, Diet for a Small Planet, sometime in the very late 60s or early 70s, I think, where she clearly laid out that if we continue on this path, if everybody starts to adopt like high consumption of high protein diets, we're eventually going to have to cut down the Amazon. And now here we are, we are cutting down the Amazon specifically, you know, people are growing soybeans to feed cows in China and pigs in China and, and America, you know. Mm -hmm. And so... There's a lot of personal choices that can contribute to environmental health besides directly involving oneself. On the other hand, I, I think that at the moment, the state of the world is in that now is the time for people who have um, ideas to speak up about the kind of world that they want. You know, I would say that the important thing from a you know from my my experience as a scientist is that that first to get a good grasp of reality like what a good grasp of reality what's the situation really in the world so and you know that's a big one huh that's a big question yeah like well, what the thing the is heck? what the heck the thing is a lot of a lot of uh, you know alternative community has traveled to india and sure they had good parties in go and stuff but they couldn't help but see the reality of the Indian subcontinent. What it means mm -hmm. to be poor. What does it really mean to be poor? What does it mean to really not have access to health services and resources and to be really marginalized? And I think those kinds of experiences, I hope, have given some people within the alternative community sort of a ground or a reference point mm -hmm. that allows them to then start thinking about what does it mean? What does sustainability mean? Does it mean that your essential oils in your soap has been, you know, sort of wrapped in brown paper? Labeled, or, certified. <laughs> or, yeah. Or mm. is there somehow a more systemic kind of uh, uh, political ecology type view that kind of comes out of that, that talks about, you know, the, the kind of... Um, reforms that have to happen in this world in order to do the things that we want to do and the things that we want to do is we want to live in a happy healthy world with biodiversity and cultural diversity and happy people who have access to resources and good health care and have enough food so they can send their kids to any school that they want and that's the kind of world that's available to us these days like as a scientist and i keep up with the literature and things you find out that like the stuff that's going on is amazing. The world as bad as, you know, it's a strange thing as sort of de more depressing as the real, also the more amazing our reality is in this world. You know, we live in the 21st century and the future is now and the possibilities for a world that we could have an idealistic are all there. It's just not just the cultural uh, will or the political will. It's really the vision the vision is somehow needs clarity, needs to be clarified, needs to be 
substantiated and needs mm -hmm. to be, you know, sort of like articulated, but also built out, you know, and that vision has to, you know, sort of like divorce itself from the, the, the reality that's keeping us going to a world that's really very unsustainable. So um, mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, I've worked most recently as a climate scientist looking at the impacts of climate change on terrestrial biodiversity and uh, small communities and far, you know, environmental health of mountains, things like that. And of course, uh, we're in a very dire situation in this world. We really need to do something. Now is the time. And so now is the time. Okay. Now is the time. When I think something that has become very evident with the with the state of the world right now, and without without getting too political, but one of the things that emerged from all this situation this year is that uh, it's becoming very obvious that the systems that we have implemented are not working. That they're not sustainable. That we are operating on systems that uh, rely on perpetual growth when we live in a closed system with limited resources. And this is just a reality that uh, I don't understand how come it's so difficult to grasp. It's so obvious. So what can we do as individuals, as a community, to start to move in the direction that you just suggested, to live in a world that is happy, we have access to health, to clean water, to clean air, uh, where we create systems that are sustainable and can provide the same qualities uh, for our children and our children's children well what exactly you know i mean there's you know there are uh different ways to approach that question i mean it's like what but generally i think you hit the mark is that the issue is really systemic and so as an individual we make these choices and we should continue to make these choices but don't let ourselves sort of be victimized saying that that it's the population of the world that has caused this. It's actually a systemic uh, uh, issue. And that systemic is, is uh, that the system that's in place is basically uh, set up and rigged for exploitation and extraction and its basic thing. And it doesn't have those basic values at its heart. So I suppose at the, at the, at the most basic level, we can start to incorporate those basic values of community, environmental care into our daily lives and into our community lives and, you know, reinforce well, re Re-implementing them, right? Because to a certain extent, these things are not new. Uh, maybe they need to be adapted to a modern world, but we look at uh, what we call uncivilized societies, and they pretty much lived in harmony with the, with the ecosystem for millennia. Yeah. The thing is, it's now, you know, I mean, the thing is, we're way, way down the line now. I mean, we have 7 billion people on the planet. Mm. It's likely to, to go up to 10 or 11 by 2050. Uh, there's uh, quite there's uh, we've surpassed 400 parts per million of CO2. So what we need to do is really look forward with the technologies that are available to us to start to, you know, and there and that's all happening. The unfortunate thing is that at the moment there's like a last gasp of the dinosaurs that won't let go of the old paradigms. The new paradigms are here already. We already have people like making you know communities uh developing new systems of governance uh finding ways for participatory democracy and pushing for it really heavily and so i think contributing to those efforts worldwide that's the next level of collective action that somehow we need to participate in but i think that uh in the meantime as a continuing as a continuing activity you know is that educating ourselves building skills building the skills that are uh, uh, required to implement those those ideas that we have and those those new paradigms and um, and and then raising one's personal vibratory frequency to sort of deal with the challenges in a in an optimistic way what we what we're finding is that really we need to keep taking the high road, but we need to keep pushing it, you know. Mm. We just got to keep pushing that high road, you know, no, no matter what, because that's where our power lies, you know, because that's where the argument for a, a better world is like it's really hard to 
argue against it, although people do all the time, right? They do all the time. And their visions of what that better world might be are grounded in their experience. So I think, you know, uh, uh, enlarging one's experience and one's uh, realm of inquiry and one's, you know, uh, level of experience in the world, all of those goes into creating a solid grounding that allows you to make like more, more uh, grounded decisions about what we can do in this world is mm. that I always, you know, I spent, I, I spent three years, I was a Peace Corps volunteer, 90, early eighties uh, and spent three years living in a small village. And that created this reference point. Like whenever you see something on TV or you read it on the newspaper about poverty, people in developing countries, you have a reference point. What does that mean? And if you've, you know, come from a, a middle class sort of bourgeois background, you know, petit bourgeois background, like, like many people, you know, who have grown up privileged in our developed societies and who don't really even understand the privilege that we've enjoyed and maybe haven't taken as much advantage of it as they can and should take advantage of the fact that we really, we, we have access to uh, education, healthcare opportunities, entrepreneurial opportunities, credit, you know, things like that. So let's start taking advantage of what's available to us to channel that into those directions that we would like to see the world and our community be able to, you know, survive really. Mm. That's what we're really looking at. And what's what we really are looking at at the moment is survival actually. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, let's, I'm putting let's a positive let that sink in for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something that we, we, focus quite a bit with, uh, with our, within our own school of Tyvedic and the practice of Tyvedic, which is, you know, to understand the relationship between systems. We look at the relationship between systems in the body. How does the musculoskeletal system works in relation to the lymph system, in relation to the circulation system, in relation to the nervous system, as an understanding of this body as a, a, an ecological being, you know? With uh, multi, uh, with multiple systems operating, no system goes out of balance alone. No system go back into balance alone. We need to work in a, a find a sort of holistic harmony, and to create and cultivate a practice where we can extend that care and that awareness beyond ourselves, uh, where we start caring for the person next to us, where we start well, to caring for the community, and we start to caring eventually for all the things that you're mentioning, seeing the water as part of our community, seeing the, the, the rainforest, seeing the mountain, the river, the, everything as part of this ecosystem that we are ourselves a part of, um, seems to be absolutely essential for us to be able to move forward. Yeah, you know, in, in ecology, we have a saying, you know, life is microclimate, you know? So it's like really, you know, very much like, but we are in an ecological system, so we're a biological system, and we're intermingled. And if you live in the jungle, then you're even more intermingled. You mm. get a lot of trans, you know, a lot of like moving across semi-permeable membranes. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, but um, I think one of the things is is that one of the beauties that I've always appreciated that. Uh, and, and has been my fascination with science and uh, uh, learning about these systems is the awe and wonder that it inspires when you really find out not just how amazing it is, but how incredibly uh, complex, amazing, intricate, and elegant beyond your imagination. So science has really enlarged my view of what the, that means. And so those biological systems, even though I chose to study plants because I couldn't deal with the mucus and the, like this so much, but the biologic, but the <laughs> biological systems, you know, are really just like, you know, the complexity that science and the understanding of science. So I think that uh, I would recommend that people not, you know, be, be, dogmatic in their approaches and specifically like you do look for those inter intermingled you know those inter um those connections that 
that are el illustrated between those those belief systems and uh, and and the kind of knowledge that's coming out. I mean, um, I, I finished university maybe 30 years ago, and then. But what's happened in the last 30 years in the biological sciences is phenomenal. And so there's there's so much more knowledge that's been generated about the systems and how they work and what what you know can be manipulated and what can't be. You know, if they just developed CRISPR, they can turn your genes on and off. You know, and so it's really like really uh, gone. So um, when one looks at these holistic ideas, you know, uh, as much as we don't want to get into the reductionist viewpoint of science, which cuts everything up and tries to understand the little pieces, the combination of those two is a really big picture. Mm. It, it, they enhance, they enhance each other. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, I, this I've is always important so to keep our eye on the big picture because it's very easy, very easy to feel overwhelmed or even defeated if we go into those infinite categorizations of life. It just feels so absolutely overwhelming and it's very easy to get lost. But to, to try to take that step back and to a certain extent keep the eye on the big picture, where can we connect the dots? Where can we keep it holistic? Uh, it seems yeah, to be you know... It, it's a strange dichotomy, of course, you know, you specialize in a particular field, you get really good at knowing something about a little thing, you know, mm -hmm. whereas you become a generalist, you know, a whole lot about nothing, you know, about a whole lot about a whole lot of things, but you don't really mm -hmm. know, you know, but somewhere in between that, you know, I think what, what, what I was saying is like, you know, many of the, the, the New Age spirituality communities have very dogmatic um, beliefs that can be easily, you know, disproven, like, you know, so easy and or are or, or really uh, magical thinking and fantastic. And so, uh, but not, not, not saying that those kinds of things, you know, don't, I'm not being too dogmatic about my, about being negative, but combining that with a really solid grounding on what the world looks like and how it actually works. It only enlarges your view. Science is like really just enlarged and begin, besides being a sense of awe and wonder, but also the understanding that you can apply to so many things, understanding how biological systems work at all so many levels. And all of a sudden, you kind of understand how you work in a way like mm -hmm. you know and 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 it applies to you know this a lot of um, other a lot of experiences you know one doesn't have to like limit that in, that inquiry just to the realm of uh, physical science there's so much more mm -hmm. yeah, that it's yeah, yeah. applied to you know psychology and uh, looking at you know various yeah. mm. and i guess that's not only fascinating it's also hopeful which is something that we could really use right now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I mean, one doesn't want to get too much into doomsday thinking, considering that, you know, there's like a, you know, the planet, the, the universe there's a lot is going estimated. On yeah, the universe is estimated to be 13.6 billion years. And so a billion's a lot. And so that's really a lot. And, you know, humans have, you know, like life has been on the planet for about 4 billion years. Humans have been around for, Oh, at least uh, uh, 200,000 years in their current form, you know, like uh, if you saw a, somebody, if you saw a, a homo sapien walking down the street with a shave from 100,000 years ago, you might not recognize them as, as any different from uh, anybody else. Mm -hmm. So, and we've had about the brain, same brain size for, so to imagine that we find that, that we're so special that we find ourselves right now in this particular, you know, challenging time, or as the Chinese would say, you know, interesting time, you know, may you live in interesting times, right? We certainly do live in interesting times. Um, but uh, if anything, you know, uh, it's a challenge, but life is, uh, is still miraculous, you know, like, uh, as a scientist, you have to, and especially as a climate scientist, you have to find, you know, there are support groups. They have support groups, Wednesday night support group for climate scientists, you know, <laughs> to, deal, to deal with the bad news, you know. But oh so I like God. to say I'm a bit of an, 
apocalyptic, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like we realize this, but on the other hand, we have these other, and specifically in the alternative community where so many people have like looked at things like uh, plant medicines, and we have to look at the messages that are coming from there. From what I understand from the reports that I get from the, the, these communities that it's all about healing. We need to heal ourselves somehow as individuals and as a planet, you know. And so as individuals, we make up that planet. So certainly starting with oneself. And healing that one connection that seems that they have been uh, severed, the connection with these surrounding systems. Because it seems very much that the, uh, the way that our society works is so disconnected from the natural world. Uh, so the cycles, the natural cycles of life that still operate and it still influences on a daily basis, uh, it's just we're not attuned to it. Well, there's certainly that. And there's certainly a lack of care. Nobody said, like, nature's just out there. And as, a, you know, the basic paradigm of the world economic system is it's there for, it's, it's, it's valued as a resource, and not less, it was, it's only more recently that we've been looking at things like ecosystem services and trying to give value to that so that can be incorporated into the thinking of, you know. But like I said, it's a big, big world and there's so much going on here. So as far as natural cycles, what we're, you know, we're still dependent upon the soil for growing our food. We're still dependent upon you know, clean air for breathing, but less so all the time, you know. And so these are things that can't be replaced. And those are the limits that we're coming up to. And basically, as a, a, a planetary global society, we're coming up against these planetary boundaries. And now we have the opportunity to uh, meet those challenges, to find uh, an, a, 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 some sort of opportunity where we can live in harmony with those boundaries where we can still have, uh, everybody can still have this beautiful life on this planet, but we can also have giraffes and crocodiles and beautiful, you know, salamanders and all of everybody else gets a chance too, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's part of that sort of, you know, compassion for the whole world, you know, compassion for yourself, but compassion for everything else. Mm -hmm. As the Buddhists say, Sabe Sata Sukita Hontu, extending that courtesy to all sentient beings. Yeah. So they also say, you know, compassionate wisdom with skillful means. And so I'm advocating for skillful means, you know. Mm -hmm. Timothy Leary said, turn on, tune in, and drop out. Then after they, you know, hassled him so much, but he changed his tune when he ran for governor. Turn in, tune on, turn on, tune in, and take over. So that's what I'm at. Okay, say that one again. Turn on, tune in, and take over. Be proactive. Be, Be proactive. proactive. Mm. Yeah. With all of that awakeness, do something with it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, but any any recommendations in terms of uh, projects, websites, interesting things that uh, can help me, can help people that are listening to us right now to turn on, turn in, <laughs> yeah? to to get ourselves educated um, on the good things that are that are happening and good initiatives yeah, I think with people with good ideas yeah i think there's a lot that's going on i i would definitely tune into the uh, activities that are happening with uh, extinction rebellion uh, there's sort of a worldwide movement and uh, you know there's there's um, greta thunberg who's been doing her school Friday strikes. And those organizations have a lot of resources. 350.org with Bill Kibben uh, is, is focused on climate change and reducing emissions. There's the Sunrise Movement in uh, the United States that's a more political movement pushing for the, the New Green Deal. These are all sort of like political actions on a, on a personal level. You know, um, I would say you know, uh, uh, fire up your curiosity. Just let curiosity rule your day. Become curious mm. about your world 
and what makes how it works and you'll find great fascination there and a lot of like useful useful information and probably closer to you than you expect i guess if people look at what's happening in their in their community uh, yeah that's of something. course the other thing is talk to your neighbors you know yeah. talk to your community talk to your neighbors see what's going on you know and if if it just happens to be that you're in that position to contribute or to participate you know and if not then you know then there's always the basic you know keep yourself healthy and you know and 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 uh, like the I Ching says uh daily practice and chariot driving you know keep yourself sharp for when you're ready, for when you're for when the call comes yeah <laughs> and the time is now <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. And the time is now. Cool. Bob, oh, man, amazing. Thank you so much for sharing okay, your this perspective. Is, this was fun. I enjoyed it. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for uh, the opportunity. Oh, man, what a pleasure. Yeah, let's just uh, open up for questions. If people that are watching us, if you have any question, anything that you'd like cool. to ask, just write it down and I'll read it out loud. Uh, Meanwhile, any what what interesting project are you are you keeping yourself busy with these days, Bob? Uh, you know, uh, there's uh, uh, I've been doing a lot of paddle boarding. Actually, I've been doing a lot of paddle boarding. <laughs> so that's been that's that's been you know, but I have a couple of projects at the moment. I'm just sort of like um, finish. I do a lot of spatial analysis. And so I work with geographic information systems and uh, so there's things that I can do remotely. So I've been doing a lot of that recently since uh, I, I recently was offered a fellowship. I have a one year uh, presidential fellowship from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which I haven't been able to take up. I was supposed to do it in March of this year. Still what planning on going. Perhaps. Well, it means that I'll go to uh, uh, Kunming Institute of Botany. I'll be based in Yunnan province and um, I'll be probably they're going to give me this fellowship to write up a lot of the results that I, I have. I've been doing working on a, a global analysis of the uh, impact of climate change on terrestrial ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And that's about ready to go. Um, and then, you know, uh, and the other one that I, I work on, uh, on and off is uh, looking at carbon. We look at carbon a lot. So soil carbon. So I have a um, some work going on on global soil carbon paper that came out on that. And, uh, and then, of course, trees. So I work on that. Global biomass and uh, tree cover is a big project that I, mm. is a continuing project I've been working on about 12 years. But uh, every once in a while, I'll do something. Nice. Yeah. Go ahead. Awesome. Well, seems that there's no questions. Perfect. So I'll okay. say... Uh, do you have um, uh, do you have like a website? Do you have anything that uh, where you kind of we can uh, have a look at your your work, uh, your essays, the things that you write? Oh uh, yeah, well, if you go on Google Scholar and look up my name, I'm, it has uh, all my my uh, papers are on there. Uh, it's under Robert John Z Zomer Z O M E R on Google Scholar. You can look me up. Uh, I have a LinkedIn page as well. So nice. I don't actually have a web page. You know, I realize it's the era of shameless self promotion, but I have to put that <laughs> Well, you have an Instagram account. Well done, Bob. <laughs> I do have an Instagram account. I've been trying for years to separate my public and private life with, with not. With How well is that working success. out for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still keeping a low profile. Sir. Nice. <laughs> Bob, absolute <laughs> pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Uh, so this video is going to be uh, saved on the Thai Vedic Instagram TV page. So you can access it at any time. Um, have a look at the, the other talks that we have there, guys. If you have suggestions for topics, things that you'd like us to discuss in the future, very welcome to your suggestions. As for today, Bob, last words of wisdom. Keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs>
Keep it real. All right. Thanks so Join much. Join us on Vedic if you haven't already. Yeah. We have a YouTube channel. You can subscribe. There's an online course that will help you tune in <laughs> with yourself, with your tools, with the elements, a way of uh, understanding your relationship between yeah, yourself and your environment. And uh, stay in touch to be continued. Keep it real. Boom. Ciao. Thank you. Thanks, all. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for watching.